Humanity is very good at creating gigantic machines to do our bidding and make our lives easier. Things you might see in everyday life can be oversized to be even more efficient. Gigantic vehicles that take to the skies, seas and more to multitask for a multitude of reasons. It's hard to say with authority what the biggest vehicles on Earth is, mainly because people have different definitions of what a vehicle is, but we can definitely point to some huge examples. Here are some of the biggest and best vehicles for you to marvel at. Dodge Power Wagon This is the giant replica of the Sheikh Hamid bin Hamdan Al Nahyan of a classic 1950s Dodge Power Wagon. The purpose of this creation was to honor the vehicles manufactured in the decade that marked the increase in oil consumption, the main source of wealth in the region from the Middle East. Now something even more surprising is the fact that it is a real home inside. This one of the biggest cars in the world weighs over 50 tons and has an entire apartment inside that has four air-conditioned bedrooms, a living room, a bathroom and a terrace in the back. Built over a period of months, the scale of the build was limited only by the size of the wheels. The pickup is eight times the size of the original, is 16 feet tall, 26 feet wide and weighs around 50 tons and is in the Guinness Book of World Records. It should come as no surprise that the vehicle holds the title of the biggest pickup truck ever made. This amazing vehicle is 64 times the size of the original Dodge Power Wagon, with wheels that were purchased from an oil truck and a windshield wiper borrowed from an ocean liner. To enter the truck, it is necessary to climb a retractable ladder installed in the middle of the floor of the vehicle. Despite its incredible size, the vehicle is fully operational and even registered for use on Abu Dhabi's roads. Antonov and 225 Mariah And 225 is also called Mariah, which means dream or inspiration in Ukrainian. This is considered the largest aircraft in operation today, with a maximum takeoff weight of 640 tons, which includes the weight of the aircraft itself plus the fuel and cargo transported. The Antonov N-225 is an airplane that has a length of 275 feet and a wingspan of 288 feet, distance from one wing tip to the other, and a height of 59 feet, its capacity puts it ahead of even the Airbus A380 and Boeing 747, the largest passenger planes in the world today with maximum takeoff weights of up to 572 tons and 447.7 tons, respectively. To get off the ground, it has six engines, and its landing gear has 32 tires in all, four on the front gear and 28 on the main gear. Mariah was developed at the request of the government of the then Soviet Union in the 1980s to transport the Buran the Russian space shuttle, and the Energia rocket. The N-225's first flight took place in December 1988, but it was not until May 1989 that it took its main cargo, the Buran. His task, initially, was to transport the various parts of the space shuttle, which were produced in different locations in the Soviet Union, to the Baikonur Cosmodrome, the largest in the world, located in Kazakhstan, then belonging to the bloc of communist countries. However, with the end of funding for the space program, the plane stopped flying in 1994, and was stationary until 2001. This plane today mainly transports large parts, such as power generators and transformers, or humanitarian aid. Currently, an hour of flight is estimated to cost between $30,000 and $60,000. When questioned, the company did not confirm the current value for the charter of its aircraft, which must take into account not only the duration of the operation, but the weight of the cargo transported and the distance to be covered. Bilaz 75,710 
It's time for you to meet the current largest truck in the world, which is the Belaz 75710. To get an idea of the brutality of this incredible heavy machine, suffice it to say that it is capable of transporting an unbelievable 450 tons on eight tires, which it would be something like carrying 75 elephants of six tons each. Isn't it impressive? The main job of the Belaz 75710 is to transport coal and ore rocks in the open. The top speed of the Belaz isn't, shall we say, incredible. It only reaches 64 km per hour when unladen, but it's only made to run inside big mines, so that's still considerable speed. To move, the vehicle uses six engines, two combustion and four electric. The two 16-cylinder diesel engines, with 2,311 horsepower each, are responsible for transmitting energy to the electric motors, which control the rotation of the wheels. The consumption of the Belarusian giant is an expressive 1,300 liters per 100 kilometers, that is, 13 liters are needed to run just one kilometer. Each of these electric motors has a power of 1,200 kilowatts, equivalent to 1,631 horsepower. The model has four-wheel drive developed by Siemens and all wheels are capable of turning. Its dimensions are an incredible 65 feet long, 29 feet wide and 26 feet high. And for all these characteristics the Belaz 75710 is currently considered the biggest truck in the world by the Guinness Book. NASA Crawler Transporter Reaching space takes a lot of gas, and gas is heavy. The total takeoff weight of the defunct space shuttle system was 4.5 million pounds. The ship's thrusters, external tank and fuel made up most of that weight. Add in the mobile launch pad and the entire set weighed in at 12.6 million pounds. So how do you get almost 13 million pounds for the launch pad? Build two transporters weighing 6.3 million pounds each the size of a baseball field. NASA's two crawler conveyors, called simply the CT-1 and CT-2, are historic machines for several reasons. They carried everything from the first Saturn V rocket and capsule for the 1967 Apollo 4 mission to the Space Shuttle Atlantis for its last Space Shuttle mission in 2011. The two crawler conveyors are among the biggest self-propelled land vehicles ever produced, and their mission begins as they leave the crawler yard with a team of 15 to 20 engineers and technicians. He drives up to an MLP, mobile launch pad, lifts it up and transports it to the VAB, vehicle assembly building, where he lowers the MLP onto high pedestals. Once the spacecraft and thrusters have been mounted to the MLP, the crawler slides under the MLP and secures all cargo to its deck. It then heads to the launch site, stabilizing the top heavy payload with a laser guidance system and giant lifting, equalizing and leveling cylinders at each corner. The tracker employs four V-16 diesel engines, two at the front and two at the back. At each end, direct current is produced and sent to eight electric traction motors that drive two trucks. The other diesel produces alternating current for lights, computers, and power for the payload. The trucks contain huge bearings that support two huge tracks each. They are 39.9 meters long and 34.4 meters wide. Height is adjustable from 20 feet to 26 feet. The loading platform is 90 feet times 90 feet. The conveyors weigh 3,000 tons. The two trackers originally cost a total of $14 million, not bad when they spanned over 50 years with plans to serve at least another 20 years. Bagger 293 
Exactly how big does a land vehicle need to be to qualify for the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's largest land vehicle? How about 315 feet tall, 740 feet long and weighing over 31 million pounds? With all this grandeur, the excavator looks like a legitimate alien work. Initially, it cost $100 million and took 10 years to build, including planning and execution time. The Bagger 293 is the heaviest land vehicle in the world, weighing in at an impressive 14,200 tons. It can manage around 240,000 tons of coal a day, which says something about how impressive this vehicle is. The Bagger 293 is a giant bucket wheel excavator built in Germany in 1995. It requires a crew of five to operate and can move over 8.5 million cubic feet of earth a day. To put that in perspective, this is the equivalent of digging a hole the length of a football field and over 80 feet deep in one day. For excavation, the Bagger 293 uses a large 70-foot swivel wheel on the end of a long stick. This wheel has a series of buckets attached, and as the wheel spins, the buckets pick up the dirt and dump it onto a conveyor belt. Conveyor belts will transport the soil to other vehicles for removal to the dump site. Weighing in at over 31 million pounds, the Bagger 293 isn't going anywhere fast. It took the excavator more than three weeks to make the 130-kilometer journey from the factory to the Garzweiler mine it would call home, traveling at a breakneck pace of one kilometer per hour. Just before the euro became Germany's official currency, more than 15 million German marks were spent on travel and energy expenses, this huge vehicle requires almost 17 megawatts per day to work, that is, enough energy to supply a city with 10,000 residents. However, even with this huge logistics, the cost-benefit is worth it. The excavator is not expected to stop working and must work day and night for at least 100 years extracting coal and other types of ore. FLNG Prelude Hundreds of engineers from around the world have combined their experiences and expertise to develop the Prelude FLNG, floating liquefied natural gas, which is the largest floating natural gas platform ever built, measuring 488 meters long, 74 meters wide and over 260,000 tons of steel. It weighs over 600,000 tons, about five times the weight of the world's largest aircraft carrier. These dimensions make the FLNG the biggest vehicle in the world today. This gigantic vehicle platform is used to help develop new natural gas fields that are currently not in production due to the high cost of exploration and infrastructure. The first field to use Shell's FLNG is the Prelude Gas Field, 200 kilometers off the northwest coast of Australia. Natural gas is extracted from the wells and liquefied on the platform itself, through a refrigeration system at minus 162 degrees Celsius, which reduces the volume of gas by 600 times allowing it to be sent directly to the ships that will transport the liquid gas to anywhere in the world. Despite its impressive proportions, the installation is a quarter the size of an equivalent plant on land. Engineers designed components that are vertically coupled to save space. The operational plant, for example, is placed above the LNG storage tanks. The decision to begin construction of the Prelude FLNG was made after more than a decade of research in technology and logistics. The largest floating facility ever built releases new energy resources at sea and produces approximately 3.6 million tons of liquefied natural gas LNG, per year or 110,000 BEP barrel of oil equivalent per day. It will remain in place during all weather events, having been designed to withstand a Category 5 cyclone. 
the FLNG will remain in place for 20 to 25 years. And these are some of the greatest vehicles ever made by man. If you know of other larger vehicles than the ones you've seen here, let us know in the comments and maybe we'll do a second part of the theme. And if you liked the video, let us know, it means a lot to us. Thanks for watching until the next video.